Hi, my name is Tyler Ragginson, and I'm an Applications Engineer for Hawkridge Systems. Today we'll be taking a look at how to add components, such as this electrical connector, to your routing library using the Routing Component Wizard. Before we begin, it's good to verify that this component is complete, has no faulty faces or gaps, and is showing as a solid body. You'll also want to add any custom appearances at this time before we save it to the library. To find our Routing Component Wizard, we'll access the Routing Library Manager, which we find under our Routing Tools. The Routing Library Manager is where you can control all of the settings SOLIDWORKS uses for routing. This is also where we locate our Routing Component Wizard. The first step is declaring what type of routing component this is. In this case, it's an electrical connector. I'll choose Electrical and progress to the next step. The component type is going to be a connector. This could also have been an assembly connector if I was showing the individual pins as separate components. The next step is adding routing functionality points. These are important and critical for SOLIDWORKS to actually route the wires or cables from your component. In this case, we're required to have at least one connection point. I'll go ahead and choose to add a connection point at this time. This turns me back into my main SOLIDWORKS dialog and opens up the routing point Command Manager. To define the origin of the route, we need to select a circular edge, circular face, a flat face or plane, or a sketch point. In this case, I'll just select the circular edge inside of my connector to declare the routing point. I can override the route type as well as the subtype, which in this case is for wire or cable. The diameter under my parameters restricts the maximum size wire or cable that can be used at this connection point. You'll want to make sure that this is set to be slightly larger than the maximum gauge wire you'll be using. The stub length tells SOLIDWORKS how much wire to add from this connection point outward towards the wire route. I'll go ahead and set this to be a quarter of an inch. Additional internal wire length allows you to add some additional wire for cutting and stripping to crimp to the pins. This is important if you'd like to ensure that you have some extra material to work with when you're cutting to the total wire length. I'll leave this at a half inch. And finally, you'll want to define which pin you're working with in a multi-pin connector such as this. That way in a 2D schematic, it correctly identifies the pins for you. I'll call this pin one. Accepting those changes will return us to our routing library manager. Now I can see I have one connection point present and I'm able to continue. In this case though, we want to add a second connection point for our second pin. So I'll choose to add connection point two. Following the same steps, I'll select my circular edge, verify my connection type, set the subtype to cable or wire, ensure my parameters are the same, and set this as pin two. I now have my two connection points created. I'm ready to progress to the next step. Next is routing geometry. Certain components require special geometry to correctly orient them when used in a route. Because this connector can be placed in any orientation, no special geometry is required. Next, we have the option to add a mate reference. This step is optional, however, minimizes the number of mates that will be required when using this component in an assembly. I'll go ahead and add a mate reference. This opens up the mate reference dialog. This is the same as any other mate reference you'd be adding to a component that you want to add to your routing library. The primary reference in my case will go ahead and be this front face of my connector because that's what's going to stop the two connections when they go together. I'll set that to be coincident and I'll set my alignment to be opposite, meaning the normal of the two faces will be opposite of each other. My second reference will be the circular face, which I want to set to concentric. And finally, my tertiary reference will be the top face of my connector, and I want to make sure that that is parallel with its mating connector, and I'll set that to be aligned. If you'd like more information on mate references, check out our other YouTube video specifically on mate references. Accepting those changes adds that mate reference to my routing component, and I can progress to the next step. This is where SOLIDWORKS runs a validity check to verify that all of the information required to use this component for a route is present. 
As long as you get the complete message, you're able to advance to the next step, which is going to be component attributes. This is where you can define any custom properties you'd like this component to have when used in a route. If you're using bill of materials with your routes, it's important to fill in this information at this time. Finally, is where we're going to save our routing component to. This is how you can give it a special name, specify a folder location, add any description, as well as choose to create end connector illustrations for flattened harness drawings. As soon as you hit finish, the wizard will save the routing component and begin a new routing component wizard if you've got multiple components you'd like to add. I'll go ahead and cancel out, because we've completed it this time, and exit out of my routing library manager. Taking a look at our component, we can see that the two connection points have been added to the graphics as well as to the tree. This has now been saved to our routing library. If I open up an assembly, we can go ahead and test out our new connector. Here we can see I have the opposite side of our connector that I want to go ahead and mate to. I'll go to my design library, routing, electrical, and I'll grab my component, which has been added to the design library. I'll go ahead and just drag that in. Because we added that mate reference, it should automatically find its correct mates and orient correctly. And I can drop in that connector. That'll begin a new route for us. And I can go ahead and say, OK. I'm now ready to begin routing from my connector. At this time, our route is connector has been added to the library successfully, and we can use it for future routes. In today's video, we covered taking a component and adding it to the routing library using the routing component wizard. Thanks for watching.